Thanks for taking the time to watch this video today. We're going to cover multi-vector data protection across endpoint network and cloud. We're going to follow an internal user named Narin who's going to be trying to share some sensitive data with an external partner named Jerry. Uh, we're going to be controlling this collaboration attempt through sanctioned cloud applications with our CASB, uh, shadow apps with our secure web gateway, uh, private applications with our ZTNA solution and then also some endpoint based controls. And all this is going to be visible to our security admin, Stacy, when we're done. Narin's going to start with Microsoft Teams. So Narin is already a member of an internal HR team. And in that team, a file has already been uploaded that contains the information he wants to share. You'll see here that that includes credit card numbers and driver's license numbers, so it's pretty sensitive. He decides that the best way to do this is just to invite Jerry to the team so he can download the file. So he adds Jerry's Gmail account as a member of this team. Now through our API integration, we get visibility into this and we can uh, build policy to say that this team must be internal only and therefore we remove Jerry's permissions as soon as they're added. Jerry gets an invite to the team, but as soon as he clicks on the link, he'll see that his permissions have been removed and he can't see anything. So Narin's next attempt is he understands and, or knows that Jerry is already a member of another team that's deliberately external facing. So he decides, I'll just download the file from the internal team and then upload it to the external team so Jerry can get access to it. So he goes to the external team, confirms, sure enough, there's Jerry's account, he's a member, and then he uploads the file into this team. Now again, uh, our policy can understand that this team has external collaborators and based on that, remove the file from this team while we allowed it on the internal team. So Jerry sees that that gets posted, but when he clicks on the link, he sees a tombstone because that file has been removed. Narin is pretty determined, so he just copies the contents of the file and tries to paste them in as a message. And in the same way, because we know there's external collaborators on this team, through the API integration, we remove the contents of the post. So Jerry sees that Narin had posted something, but it's been removed and he can't see it. So Narin decides to switch to OneDrive. So he's going to take his file, upload it to OneDrive, and then share it with Jerry. Now through the Secure Web Gateway, we can see this upload happening, but we know it's a sanctioned account and a sanctioned tenant, so it's not blocked. It's not a violation of policy yet. When he tries to share it externally with Jerry, on the other hand, now we violated policy and through the CASB, we remove that shared link. Narin switches to Outlook and sees that he has a notification telling him that that OneDrive share has been removed because it violated policy. So he creates a new email to Jerry and then uploads the file as an attachment to that email. The upload again is allowed because this is a sanctioned service but the email will be blocked. This is an important point of visibility because we can do uh, scanning of all outbound mail through an SMTP proxy, which means that we can block any email attachments regardless of what device they come from or what application was used. Narin gets a notification telling him that his email was blocked. He decides, all right, well then I'll just use a personal account. So he logs into his Google Drive account. This time when he tries to upload the file though, the upload's blocked because this is not a sanctioned account or a sanctioned service. He realizes this is not going to work for my work laptop. I've got to get this file off this machine. So he takes the file and he copies it to a folder that's shared on the network. Through our endpoint protection, we see that the folder is shared and so we, we prevent that copy. So instead, he plugs in a USB stick and decides to copy the file onto the USB stick. And once again, because that's removable media, we prevent the copy. So Narin says, all right, well, I did upload that file to OneDrive earlier. I'll just go download it on my personal machine. So he jumps onto his personal laptop and he goes to OneDrive and tries to download it. But through our reverse proxy, we're able to prevent the download of sensitive content from any untrusted device. So when he downloads the file, we're, we've ripped out the contents and all he sees is a tombstone. Similarly, he knows that that file exists on an internal JIRA server. Again, from his personal laptop, he's able to log into the JIRA server, this time through our ZTNA solution. And once again, we can apply the same data security policy to say if the device is not trusted and managed by the, the company, then it can't download sensitive data. So when he clicks on the link, he gets a block page. Stacy, the security administrator, has visibility into all the things that Narin's been doing. So 
First, she sees an incident showing that Jerry's Gmail account has been removed from the internal HR team. She also has an incident showing that a file was deleted from an external facing team. She can see the match content on the file and who the external collaborators were. She sees that a shared link was removed off of Narn's OneDrive and she can see the blocked email attachment. This gives Stacy pervasive visibility into our end-to-end -end data protection solution. Thanks for taking the time to watch this demo. If you want to learn more, go to skyhighsecurity.com.